In this short presentation, I'd like to take a look at how we go about determining the atomic mass of elements from information about their isotopes. Some of you have asked for further practice. I thought this might be a reasonable start. Uh, and there's lots of ways we can get practice after this. In this presentation, I'll give you a visual approach to thinking about how these problems work. You can take this visual approach and then couple it to the mathematical parts you've seen in class. Uh, when you're all done with the video, you should be able to have you should have a solid concept as the origin of the atomic mass, how we get, come about getting the atomic mass, and also be able to find the atomic mass if you're given sufficient information. Pretend momentarily those are atoms, though you probably know those are much, much larger than what real atoms are. It'd be easy to imagine that if all those spheres were identical, they'd probably each have the identical mass, that we could figure out how many spheres we had in that beaker by simply getting the mass of the spheres, dividing by the mass of each sphere, and that would tell us how many there actually were. But in atomic life, it gets more complicated. In atomic life, what happens is we have isotopes. So in here now, you see two isotopes of this particular atom, an element. And so what you see happening here is you have yellow spheres, black spheres, blue spheres, or on the other side, the question now becomes, these are all mixed up in nature. What do I know about the average atomic mass if my whole sample is that, where each sphere has a different mass? So we can still talk about the average mass, but we have to take a look at how it is we calculate that from that point. The picture below represents the set of isotopes you saw before in the, in the mixing experiment, mixing video. Notice that below each beaker, the mass is the isotopes and the abundance of each is given. So I've got that written down here so we can kind of keep track of where these numbers are going to be. Each isotope is considered separately and the total mass of the isotope is determined by multiplying the number of atoms I've got. So here's my, for this isotope, uh, over here it has a mass of 12. We've got 17 of these. Each one is a mass of 12. So the total mass of those is just 17 times 12. Similarly, for the isotope, this got a uh, this got a uh, 13 for his mass number. There are five of those. Multiply those, and so the plan is just multiply across, add up these numbers all together, and this is the total mass in the beaker. To find what the average mass is, even though they're different, what you do is take the 314 you've got here and then divide it by the total number of atoms you've got. So the average atomic mass in this case is 12.6. Notice that 12.6 is closer to 12, but that makes sense because I have 17 of those number 12. 